Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while, but today we're going to be talking about a huge misconception in our society today regarding sugar and oral hygiene. Everyone in our society constantly says that the only way to keep your teeth healthy is to brush and floss every day, use fluoride in your toothpaste, and go to a dentist regularly for checkups. While this is all kind of true, doing all this stuff does not keep your teeth healthy, but rather just slows down the inevitable decay of your teeth. Your oral health actually does not depend on how much you brush, it actually depends on what you eat, more specifically how much sugar you eat. Allow me to explain. Although people have been saying for so long to brush and floss every day, and the vast majority of people actually do do all this stuff, dental cavities are still one of the most common diseases among humans, affecting 35% of the whole world population. Furthermore, by the age of 12, the average amount of missing, decayed, or filled teeth is 2, and 25% of all men over the age of 65 are completely missing all their teeth. As you can see, despite all the brushing and flossing that's going on, oral health is still a huge problem. It's got to make you think, maybe there's something else causing this issue besides how much we're brushing every day. And there is. It's sugar. And I don't mean all sugar, like natural sugars that are in fruit and breast milk. I'm talking about added sugars, like the stuff they put in sweet cereals and soda. This is what's causing the widespread oral hygiene problem. And surprisingly, science has known about this for a while now. A group of studies run a few decades ago found that added sugar is the main cause of tooth decay, and that brushing, flossing, and using fluoride only serve to slow down the harmful effects sugar has on your teeth. The only way to stop tooth decay completely is to not consume added sugars at all. This became very clear when looking at countries that consume very little sugar, such as Nigeria. In Nigeria, cavities are almost non-existent, with over 98% of all people never having had a cavity in their life. The researchers found that your risk for cavities starts at 0% when you eat zero added sugars, but as soon as you add even a little sugar to your diet, this risk percentage shoots up exponentially. This was discovered in a study on Japanese people living in Japan before, during, and after World War II. Basically, the scientists observe a large group of Japanese people during this troublesome time period where sugar consumption drastically changed and saw how their change in consumption of sugar changed their overall oral health. Before World War II, the average Japanese sugar consumption per person per year was equal to 8% of the total calories consumed. Then, during the war, this number dropped just below 0.1% and then went back up to 14% after the war was over. What they found in this study was that even when sugar intake was all the way down to 2% of total calories consumed, cavities still continued to form. This proved that even eating small amounts of sugar can still cause cavities. However, once the consumption of sugar dropped that low, the number of cavities people got was cut in half. This is why the researchers now recommend restricting added sugar intake to the below 3% of total calories consumed. And realistically, this 3% is a really small amount. Just one can of soda has enough sugar to satisfy this 3% for two days. This is why dentists recommend keeping added sugar below 5% of all calories consumed instead of 3 because it's more realistic. During the sanctions in Iraq, the average added sugar intake actually did drop below 5%, giving us a good representation. And this cut the cavity rates in half. So while this recommendation does help, the ideal amount would be 0%. If you're going to keep your sugar consumption as low as 3 or 5% and just eat super tiny amounts, you might as well just go all the way and cut sugar out completely. Although it seems hard to stop eating added sugars completely, it's the only way to truly stop cavity formation. No amount of brushing, flossing, or fluoride can fix that. Although these things can minimize the damage, they don't solve the problem, but instead just lessen the consequences. The best way to go about this is to solve the problem at its root, and the problem is diet. Just stop eating sh added sugars, and that's it. Alright, so to sum everything up, you do not get cavities because you don't brush or floss enough. You get cavities from eating added sugars, and remember, added sugars do not include intrinsic sugars that are naturally in things like fruit and breast milk. It only includes foods where sugar is added to make it sweeter, like cereal and soda. And although dentists and health professionals recommend keeping sugar consumption around 3-5% to of total calories consumed, the best thing to do is to keep it at zero so you have a 0% risk of cavities instead of an exponentially higher risk. Anyways, that's all for today. We're actually going to be doing a whole series on sugar and the many reasons it's bad for you, so make sure to subscribe to keep up with the next videos in the series coming out soon. And while you're at it, like the video and leave a comment down below with any questions or thoughts you might have. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.